Hey, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. So it's going to be Henry Cavill today because... Um, you know, he's got this Argyle uh, movie, perhaps franchise coming up. He's got tons of wonderful people in it. And folks want to know how successful is he going to be. They kind of said that he missed out on perhaps being the next James Bond, actually because he's too old. Isn't that interesting? So I hope you like the video. If you like the video, please do like the video. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. Okay, well, I just want to warn you that the electricity is off at uh, in our neighborhood, and so I'm not able to have light coming in the way I like it, so you can see the cards well or see me well. I'm just using a, a light that's coming from the one window I have, so this is what you're going to get. So, Henry Cavill. Um, folks are crazy for him. Um, the uh, films that he's been in have been uh, phenomenal. He's not only you know a, a, not a handsome guy, he's also an amazing uh, actor and uh, in a subtle way, and he's been in some of the biggest uh, movies uh, out there, which are um, the Tom Cruise. So, and then folks were sad that maybe he wasn't gonna be in uh, the James Bond, the next James Bond, but they actually look for someone who they know as, is not too old because they know that there's gonna be, you know, two or three or five or six uh, episodes that, that take on whoever the new Bond is. There's never just one or two uh, 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 episodes of a new Bond. So anyway, so yeah, this Argyle series seems to, to hit the mark. Um, he's got some amazing people in there. I think John Cena, uh, Dua Lipa. Um, oh, I can't think of the other guy that's always an evil uh, presence. Morgan Freeman, perhaps. Um, it might not be Morgan Freeman. There's another Samuel L. Jackson. That's who it is. Maybe Morgan Freeman too. So uh, Argyle, and it's it's an amazing story about this. Uh, right, if I understand it correctly from the trailer, about a, a woman who writes spy uh, fiction, and and but then this uh, her characters somehow come to life and it's not clear whether it's in her imagination or if it's actually happening and the movie uh, at times goes back into her real life in her home uh, contemplating this next novel or the action of spies being flown around in helicopters and chasing and jumping off buildings uh, which is what you typical in a James Bond action uh, Mission Impossible kind of movie so it seems like it's gonna be amazing in other words, the characters come to life, and I think it's up to you to decide, is it real? Do they really come to life, or are they just coming to life in her mind, or what's going on? But before we get into the reading about the movie and James uh, Henry Cavill's life, let's have just a moment of meditation. So, is the movie going to be successful? Let's just start with a couple of easy ones. Is the new uh, Henry Cavill movie, not the series, uh, not the, uh, just this one movie, is Argyle, is this, is this movie going to be successful in three cards? One, two, and remember I'll talk more about these cards at the end of the video. These are kind of interesting and they're uh, ancient, actually. So, um, you know, copies of ancient cards. So, museum quality, actually. So, uh, first card, uh, is the movie going to be successful? Okay, so this is the Four of Swords. You know, and the Four of Swords is... Um, I'm not sure these are swords and not wands. Yeah, the Four of Swords. And I'm going to just make sure that I agree with my interpretation. Yeah. So this is just really being contemplative and uh, and knowing when not to move, when to take a break and understand the situation you're in. Is the movie going to be uh, successful? And the Four Swords is kind of waiting to see. Um, the next one up is the, this represents the star card. 
the star is very appropriate because we're talking about Henry Cavill. So he is uh, very prominently displayed in this read about is the movie going to be successful? Well, it's about him uh, and, uh, and he's the star. And then the final card here is going to be, okay, what are you? These cards are so hard to determine. This is the King of Cups. King of Cups. So the King, again, this is Henry, and this is Cups right here, which are compassion, heartfelt situations. And so what we've got here is it's a wait and see situation. The Four of Swords, truth, justice, rules of law. So you could say um, justice or truth, uh, how people feel about the movie. Uh, is it's, it's a caution. It's, it starts out with a caution, but it has the benefit of the star of Henry Cavill. And in the end, Henry Cavill is still depicted as a king of emotion. So it might be the emotional attachment people have to him and his characters are what brings us through, but it looks good. These cards look good for, for the movie. So let's see, and I hope um, the shadows aren't keeping the cards from being seen. We'll see. So now, um, let's see, what about Henry Cavill's personal life? Okay, I don't know who he's seeing, if he's married, if he's, I, th I think he was with someone and I forgot her name and then they were apart and then they were together again. I don't know much about his personal life, but I just want to know if he's going to be happy in his personal life uh, for the next few years. Three cards, one, two, Three. And I have to say, just watching him on uh, interviews on British television, he seems like a very nice, very uh, easy to know person as, as a person. So this is the Ten of Swords, and this is his personal life. Ten of Swords are truth, justice, rules, and law. And, you know, what's harder to get right in some people's relationships, especially these star-studded relationships, than truth, uh, justice, rules, law. And the Ten of Swords depicts a heavy load to push up the hill. And that's what this guy has. I'm going to guess this is Henry Cavill. And uh, the Ten of Swords is, is a lot of stuff. Uh, but he's got the benefit of having figured out to use this sack. And uh, with that, it's going to make this uh, emotional journey a bit easier for him. Um, personal life. So what is this? This is the King of Swords. Okay, so again, Henry Cavill, and you can see the king right here depicted, see his crown, and of course, this is the sword. So this is the king of swords, and this is Henry Cavill, his personal life. So he's, it, truth is important to him. I would say the, the basis of a relationship is more important to him than the flowery part of it. And the final uh, thing here is the high priestess. Interesting. And the high priestess, oh, this is perfect because it's going to take the perfect match to him, the perfect high priestess. And the high priestess stands for what? Truth. She stands for um, uh, protection of your uh, most innermost uh, private self. And so it's going to take a high priestess to, to make this personal life well. And since she showed up in this reading, I think she's going to show up in his life. So I don't know who the high priestess is. I don't know if she's in his life now, but she will be. And so uh, it's a difficult relationship. It's probably most celebrities see it. He is going to be the king of his uh, justice, his truth. And, um, and he's going to be joined by uh, the high priestess, which some could say is even more important than the king. So that's interesting. So now let's just do a, a six cards on uh, Henry Cavill uh, as it relates to, I think, his professional career. Because we want to keep seeing him. And if he doesn't do well in his professional career, we won't keep seeing him. So I think that's uh, what we want to know about. Um, it, because if, if, if someone's professional career dissolves, I mean, within a year, we've forgotten about them. We've moved on to the next person. But uh, And everyone has a lot, or lots of folks have a lot of strong feelings about Henry Cavill. So if we look at his professional career, how is that going or going to go? And that lets us know uh, how long he's going to be in our lives, or at least in the lives of those people who are interested in knowing what's going on. So six cards. This is Dyadic Cross. One, two, three, four. Professional career. And remember, I give you more detail on all these cards in just a minute as soon as we finish the readings. So, so the professional career of Henry Cavill. Uh, the signifier card. Okay, this is the Seven of Swords. This is theft and betrayal. His professional career, Swords of Truth, Justice, Rules, and All. This is theft and betrayal. I wonder if in business he's not going to face uh, some uh, abuse. 
Theft and Betrayal, Seven of Swords is the signifier card of Henry Cavill's career. Um, ah, <laughs> and the challenge to that, this theft and betrayal, is a broken heart. In regard to these truths, justice, rules, law, the basis of the whole thing for Henry Cavill's career is, oh, what are you? So you're an ace of value. Ah, the basis of the whole thing is that he has, a, he, he, his franchise, himself, his, his, uh, what he's built out of his career as a professional actor and his following, that's the basis of all this, his value. And in the past here, okay, this is going to be the a five, I think, of Pentacles. That's interesting. Can that be right? A five of Pentacles? Um, or five of the Major Arcana, which is the Hierophant. I'm going to say it's a five of Pentacles. If it's a five of Pentacles, then um, we've got to go to. Da, 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 da. Oh. Hardship, uh, abandonment. Ah, oh, but that's in the past. So that's good. So Five of Pentacles in the past is some abandonment, some harsh abandonment, but some hardship. But that's in the past. Uh, but it doesn't look like an easy road ahead of him. Anyway, in the sky of this reading is the um, King of Pentacles. Yeah, so the King of Pentacles. And peace, this is what uh, this says right here. And uh, this is very interesting. So the sky of this is reaching some sort of a peace. Uh, and I think, again, this is Henry Cavill. And then the final outcome for his career, which looks like it's not going to be an easy road, is um, that high priestess again. So what's going to take him through, whatever happens in his career, is having this tranquility at home. That's why she showed up from the previous reading. So what about his career? Well, um, it's, it's, it's theft and betrayal, but I think it's the people that maybe manage or maybe the network, who knows, but it's the, it's the business part of it. There's theft and betrayal. And, and, uh, and that is challenged by the heartbreak of the fact that there is theft and betrayal. The basis of it all, which makes a strong basis is Henry Cavill himself's value in these pinnacles. And, uh, and in the past is this, um, difficulty. Okay. In the sky though, is the great thing is that he comes back as the king of uh, pentacles. So, and, and even displaying peace and a dove. So his calmness, his, his light is what's overseeing all of this difficulty. And in the end, it's a good, solid something at home that we saw from the last reading, this high priestess that uh, leads that life through. I love that. I think it's a good reading. We like that for Henry Cavill. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. Hang on. Okay, so this Sola Busca Tarot uh, are great cards. These are museum quality, and uh, these are uh, in the era of the Italian Renaissance. So I love these cards. Los Carabio, amazing box to come in. Look at that. And uh, you really feel like you got a great gift if you got these. The book is pretty cool, too, but it's not in color, but it's a lot of interesting story. I mean, you have to be interested in reading this to kind of get through the book, but there's some good tips on divination in there, too. The cards... Um, are great. I mean, they're slick, they're big. Um, so that's something that makes them a little bit hard to use. But, um, you know, these date back from around, like I said, the mid to late 1700s, I guess. And they're an assemblage of different uh, uh, examples of cards from a couple different uh, museum pieces, I think, or private collections. And then they put them together to make this whole 78 card stack. But I mean, look, I mean, they're gorgeous. You see them, how beautiful they are and colorful. It's just hard to use them. Um, you just have to commit to uh, how are you going to uh, work out your divination. So, really love these cards. I'm so glad I got them. The Solabusca Tarot. And, um, but honestly, I don't use them that often because they're a little tricky to use. Gosh, and look what a mess I made trying to do this. You know, this is a good way to mix the cards up. And uh, if you want somebody, if you're doing a reading and you want to kind of get their energy into the cards, I mean, look how much you have to handle them to get them back together. So that's all good uh, for me as far as getting the uh, cards uh, mixed up with some good uh, juju. Well, coming back tomorrow, I'll be doing it all again. So ciao for now.